The UK has motability schemes that make it easier for disabled people to have access to cars. That access helps people who struggle with movement to get help leasing a scooter, a car, a powered wheelchair or a wheelchair accessible vehicle. The eligibility criteria are fairly straightforward and the help available is banded according to need. Payments would typically be about £260 a month, which brings quite a few cars into range. So, let's say you're a wheelchair user and you've managed to find a suitable car with the help of one of the government schemes. At home, you'll know if you'll be able to fit a charger that's accessible. But what happens when you're out and about? To help us understand some of the challenges being faced, we're joined by Roger Warner. He's a wheelchair user himself and for the past couple of months has been looking at the challenges of using public chargers. With the aim of raising awareness so that people planning new installations can at least take into account some of the problems disabled people can face. Now the things that I personally need as a disabled driver is access. You know, we need to be able to get the wheelchair in and out of the car. That's the primary thing. Second thing is that um, if I'm alone, I need to be able to do it on my own and I need to know that I can manage the cable the plug, plugging into the car, and then obviously to see the screens and to use the credit card or the, the RFID card. So that, that isn't always possible. In fact, I would say maybe 10% of the machines that I've used are, are possible, the majority are not. So that's quite a concern for me. Then other things to take into consideration are, when, when if, if I can't find a parking space that, that is got a wide gap between it, like a disabled driver's parking space, I've either got to stay in the car um, or if I come back and somebody's parked next to me, too close to my car, I can't get in my car, so I've got to wait until they've finished. So that, that's another thing that I have to think about. So generally speaking, I need to find a place like uh, motorway services where I know that if I can't get back in my car, at least I can sit inside in the dry, in the restaurant, you know, with a cup of coffee and, until I'm able to get back in my car and go. Now, generally speaking, if you've got a wheelchair, you need about one meter 20 minimum to be able to turn around, operate the... So, quite often you'll find, I noticed at one installation I went to recently, a new installation, they had a white hatch line space between the cars, but it was only 80 centimetres wide, which is the width of this wheelchair. So again, it, it puts you so close to the car that you can't, you can't turn around. So this particular space here, although it's not dedicated, um, yeah, this is plenty of room. I would say this distance here is, is adequate. I've parked the car front ways today because with my plug it's on the back of the car and um, I couldn't quite reach it from here but I think I can reach it by parking it this way around so let's give that a go. First of all this design is quite good as you can see there's no curbs and I can actually get very close with my wheelchair. Um, the RFID reader is nice and low and the screen is in a good position where I can read it and there's no reflection from the sun so the first the first uh, image is, is very very good right I'm going to use this one now this is a very heavy cable um, Immediately we've got a problem here. Right, put on one brake. Okay, 
that looked difficult and it was but at least it's doable i've got the plug in so now i've got to start the actual charge Okay, success. This is the first time I've actually used this configuration. I've used an Osprey before, but this is a very different unit. This looks like a much more modern and uh, better ergonomically designed unit. Um, first of all, these two protective poles, they are much further back than, than in many that I've used. Quite often they're, they're quite a long way forward, which prevents you from getting close to the machine. Whereas in this case, as you can see, they're just about six or eight inches away from the actual unit itself. So that, that allows me to get right up close. And another good thing is the, the angle. Um, quite often I find that I can't see the screen because when it's high up and it's at this angle, you get a reflection on the screen. So you, when you're low down, you can't actually see what, what, the, uh, what it's reading on the actual screen. Whereas this one seems to be uh, much more ergonomically friendly to somebody low down in a wheelchair like me. Um, also, the, to, grab, to grab the plug here, you know, it's, a, it's at arm level. If you're trying to do something up here, obviously it's much more difficult, much, much um, more complicated. So this, this is a good design as well. And additionally, I notice that it's got this kind of a, a spring thing that seems to help when lifting the weight of the cable and um, you know, makes you know, delivering the cable to the car that much easier. So those are some of the issues affecting EV drivers with disabilities and how this new Osprey charger located in Banbury fares quite well for wheelchair users. Thanks Roger for sharing your experience and knowledge with us. There is a lot more work to be done though to make EV charging more usable for people with disabilities and we urge companies to consider this as they ramp up installation of new stations. If you want to watch more of Roger's own videos on EV ownership with a wheelchair, check out his YouTube channel Roger's wheeling about. The link to it is in the video description. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe to the Witch EV YouTube channel.